Good morning and welcome again to the 21st annual exhibit of Hydrogen Fuel Cell Technologies and Batteries. Um, we've had uh, one lecture from H2 Logic. We were talking to the CEO about the fueling station technologies. We're going to be continuing on this subject because it is so important for uh, hydrogen mobility. And we'll be talking about the, sub the subject of site integration uh, with the project manager at H2 Logic. Um, his name is Ulrich Torp Svensson. Please welcome with me Ulrich. Thanks a lot there. Morgan. Yes, we'll just continue on from uh, what Jacob was just talking about. Uh, in fact, I think I have one of the best jobs in the world as uh, we have uh, the possibility to play with Lego bricks, not in a small scale size, but in a big size for site integration. So my work at h 2 is to make sure that we install uh, hydrogen refueling stations as customers uh, should like them and help them in that support to make that efficiently and also having a fast integration and a fast commissioning process. What we see is that it's very necessary to, uh, to get the station up and running and uh, making sure that the refilling station, if it's there, the customer needs the station to be installed, will not have to have a, a long period for, for building and construction. So I would like to talk to you here, both uh, on the forum and online, a little about our experiences with the uh, installation, both in Denmark and here in Germany as well. So just uh, a small chart with, I think, also Jacob uh, just uh, shown just before. We can see here stations uh, in uh, Europe, which have been installed over the few years. Uh, we have approximately 20 stations in uh, operation. Uh, primarily, our Danish network has been uh, the largest achieve for our company and making sure to have these uh, fast installations and having stations in operation. And the last station we put into operation was in Kolling. In fact, the first station in H2ME project, uh, which is the European uh, project from uh, FCU, funding uh, hydrogen refueling stations and FCVs in, in Europe. And this is our Danish uh, network, uh, which Jacob also was uh, talking a little bit about. Uh, we made quite an effort making a strategic launch of rider fueling stations in Denmark, making sure that the population has uh, a short distance to, to refueling stations. Uh, the issue is, of course, that we need cars and hydrogen refueling stations to, to meet the market at the same time. Uh, what we have tried to secure is to go into dialogue uh, with municipalities and also making sure when a hydrogen refueling station is uh, placed in a, a location that there should also be uh, cars available in the area. That is good for the operation of the station, of course, that there are cars to, to use and utilize the station, but also in the area you will be able to see both cars and the station. So just shortly here is the, the stations which are in operation. Uh, currently we are working at the one in, in Espia, which is the major harbor city. So in fact, when this station is in operation, you will have the possibility to take the ferry to, uh, to England and use also the stations in, uh, in London. Uh, furthermore, we have ferry from uh, the North Fiat to, towards Norway and Oslo, and you can also take the bridge to, to Sweden. And as you all know, of course, Denmark is just on top of Germany, and the distance down to Hamburg from the station in Kolling is only 240 kilometers. So that is quite well for, for operating. But let's just go a little bit into the process of getting stations uh, in operation and getting the permits for installing stations. Uh, we have seen that there's quite different uh, challenges uh, around uh, Europe in getting the, the permissions for, for doing that. Uh, so I would like to, to talk a little about the experience we have in Denmark. Uh, the process in Denmark is quite lean uh, compared to other countries and uh, hopefully some of the experience we have made can uh, be used by others also to, to make sure for having a, a fast installation and uh, commissioning of the, the stations. So what we are really looking into is having a free dialogue with both the site owners and also municipalities or other people having a inference on uh, where stations could be put into operation. 
that could be neighbors hearings that could be environmental uh, groups or others who can infiltrate the process making sure it will be as lean as possible but also that we have influence them in a positive way and uh, having the possibility for them to give feedback and response to having a hydrogen restating station in the neighborhood. The process with uh, having the permits is uh, in different levels in, uh, in Denmark. Uh, building permits is in fact just for, for yeah, building like a normal house or doing the construction works at site. So a hydrogen refilling station can be seen as a wash hall at a refilling station or, or just a small house. So that is just the, the permitting for, for the building process. Then there is the operation permit, which uh, normally is given by the local authorities under the, the fire marshal. Uh, this has to do, in fact, with making sure that the system is safe. And uh, as Jacob was just talking to you before, we are looking very much into functional safety and have developed this new station, which have been having functional safety as a, a milestone in the development of that uh, system. But of course, uh, equipment safety and process safety is very important. Our experience in with uh, making sure that the station will be in a, a safe manner, both for people operating the station, but also for other customers driving the uh, conventional station, we need to integrate this system to be uh, possible to be in a safe environment. And of course, we take also dialogue with the local fire marshals. What we see is that the fire marshals are perhaps not nervous about ride ring refueling station, but they don't have that much knowledge about it. So for us, it's very important to give them a high level of information and also having uh, the possibility to have an open dialogue with them, uh, rather than not just making a plan and at the very end, having the station operation being met by quite a few demands by, uh, by the municipalities or fire marshals. So we try to take that in advance. Um, that process can take from up to two weeks to 15 weeks. Um, and by that time, we will have the permit to be standing, um, or building on the, the foundation and all needed for, for the station itself. Operation permit is normally given at the end of the process, which I'll just be coming back to. If we are having on-site production in Denmark, we need to go to a national level, uh, having a, a permit at the DEMA, uh, that is the Danish Emergency Response Guide, um, and they have uh, requirements for on-site productions. Uh, we have five systems in Denmark with on-site production, and we have uh, five systems uh, with uh, a Dombov solution. I think this is also comparable to, to other countries. Uh, I'll come back to, to German uh, installations experiences just after this presentation here. Uh, then we have the civil works. Uh, we try, of course, here also to shorten down the period, as this can be an inconvenience of the site owners. Uh, so this site here is just next to the Great Bell Bridge, which was able to see at a larger picture, but not here. Uh, here we have an... Um, conventional refueling station in the background and here we have for, for truck diesel and there was uh, a lot of land where we were able to, to dig out the space required for uh, the car 100 product. Uh, what you can see is that we just need to prepare the station uh, above here uh, to be placed and underground is the power supply, foundation and just a pavement around the system itself. When this has been done, we are able to do this very quick installation and uh, before uh, the station itself will leave the factory, we will do a factory acceptance test. Uh, normally we will invite the customer to participate in this and we will also make sure to have an uh, approval of the system itself, making sure that the commissioning uh, phase will be quite shortly uh, when it first arrived at site. So we have a third party system uh, or notified body, I believe in Germany it's called SUS. Um, and they will give the operation permit for the system itself and giving this unit approval. So this is the major task to doing a fast installation and commissioning at site. Having the installation at site is quite fast when the, everything has been prepared. Uh, we can do it as quick as down to 46 hours, but of course safety is the main issue. So normally it will take around two to three days for having the station put on site and put it again into operation. Um, the system here is uh, prefabricated in uh, factory facilities in Herning and as the system has been tested and um, small commissioned at our factory, 
and having this human approval, it's just ready to run and we only need to boost up the systems and then have an uh, on-site expression by the third party or the sys. And then the last part will be what we call the site exception test, the phase where we'll bring in the customer and uh, have a test chart of them to, to hand over the system for them and making sure that all uh, functionalities are working accordingly to what has been agreed. And uh, then we just need to celebrate and put the station in operation. So what we see here is that we have a, a possibility to do this quite fast. Uh, one of the fastest uh, installations we did, we had a very short pre-dialogue and uh, the permits uh, site was only for one week. Uh, so really depending on how, how well prepared we are, we can, can shorten this down. Um, civil works can sometimes be uh, speeded up a bit if we have the building permit and only lead the operation permit. Continuing on here in the German process, uh, what we have seen is that the municipalities are working uh, in a, um, another pace and um, you're having a, a building permit from Hansestadt or Landkreis. Um, you have the, the three month period for them to, to give you the Betriebserlaubnis. Uh, that is comparable to the building permit. Um, also here we like to, uh, to go into dialogue um, preparing them as much as possible and also giving the possibility to, to have an open dialogue. We really think that is one of the major success points, not just sending in a, a final uh, application, but having the possibility to adjust things uh, with the local authorities or perhaps also the fire marshals. Continue further on, here is some experience for the station we installed in Hamburg. Uh, this was uh, one of the first stations we made with an uh, four court solution with the um, dispensering. Of course, that means that we need to put in a bit more civil works, um, especially doing four court installations. We need to, to boil the operator for, for a short time or perhaps middle short term, as we need to, to go into the ground and make sure we have the channels prepared for, for hydrogen piping to the dispenser. Um, I think this is in fact one of the major issues for the future to come as we see dispensers need to be installed in, in four core solutions. We need to make sure that the fuel filling station uh, with gasoline and diesel can still be kept in operation while we are doing these upgrades on site. But as we have a possibility to uh, install our heating filling station and the dispenser up to a distance of 50 meters, we have quite some different solution of how we should take the, the pipeline, we just not always need to take the shortest route, so if we can make a different route to, to make it more convenient for the operation of the station, we can take that solution. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, here as well, we had the FAT, uh, which we talk, talked about before, uh, making the station uh, being approved and having this uh, communication with the customer. Um, Installation fee in Hamburg uh, was also done in a quite longer time compared to the stations in Denmark, as we need this four-core solution. Uh, I think time is running out for me, I'll just speed up a little bit. So this is the station at Shell and uh, Schnackenburg Island, Hamburg. Um, yeah, quite a nice layout and you're not even able to see the hydrogen dispensers as it's just integrated here, but in fact it's just here in, in the background. So this is uh, one of our proposals for, for the new design for site integration. Uh, we think that the design for refueling stations should be quite nice. It should be attractive for the customers and uh, giving the appeal for them to want to use hydrogen and not seeing it as uh, just a big industrial product. Uh, of course, there are quite a few different ways to, to do this, but this is uh, one of our proposals how to do this. Um, just spinning our bill, I will just uh, see you through how small we can do this integration. Uh, having a maximum distance of around 10 to 11 uh, meters and having it even smaller in the forecourt here with the with local dispenser. So this is also one of the possibilities to looking into the future, making a, a smaller integration in the beginning and then uh, having the possibilities further on as demand will increase to integrate up to two dispensers at one site. So if we in at early stage make sure that we can allocate some space for, for upgrades for, for station and storage, then we will uh, be able to, to increase demand as it, it goes along. 
I can see the time has now run out, so I'll just run directly to questions. Do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, we, we're really almost out of time, but I can't resist asking one question. <laughs> Do you ever um, uh, uh, find yourself cursing these people, uh, you know, uh, blast their certification processes? It's kind of unfair that newer technologies seem to be held to a higher standard. Your colleague Jacob mentioned uh, that uh, conventional gas stations would probably be not allowed uh, the way they're structured now because they are risky, inherently risky. Um, and uh, whenever new technologies are on the market, in fact, uh, you really have to hold to a higher standard. Is there an unfairness? Uh, no, no, not really. We have a very high level of, uh, of safety. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's very important that the customers and the people around in the area will have been informed that this is a safe system. And of mm -hmm. course, in time, uh, the the level of demand will perhaps be, be slacked a bit. But I think it's, it's quite fair that the public in the area should know this is a safe system. Mm -hmm. You so don't need to, to be living in an area and being unsafe. That is not nice. Yeah, yeah. certainly um, uh, were there an accident, it would be detrimental to the industry as it develops. Um, and uh, we need this infrastructure. It's quite funny you're saying that because when you talk to people in the local communities, they are quite afraid what can happen with the station. We are more concerned what can happen in the environment around the system. So the system is so safe that nothing really can happen. Um, so, so what we will want to protect the station from is the environment around it. So if you have a, a nearby house or... <laughs> also that, yeah. But it can also be a cars driving into the system or if you have at the Nepal lot a major fire, we need to protect our hydrogen refueling systems from the environment. Mm. But all other people see it as they need to have the station to be protected for, mm -hmm. for the environment. Okay, we'll have to leave it at that, but you can join um, Ulrich at the booth, which is... Uh, B60? Um, B60, right around the corner. Um, uh, um, Ulrich Svensson, Project Manager H2 Logic. It's been a pleasure. Hope to see you back next year. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We'll be continuing in one minute, so stay seated. The drinks are on the house. <laughs>